Assalamu alaikum. Dear, Dear Imam Omar, I hope this finds you well. So you remember the position I was trying to get last year? The one my uncle decided to give to someone else because he was more qualified? Well, turns out the guy was awful, and the position is once again vacant. I've got a meeting with my boss, and I'm pretty sure he's promoting me. I've got another year of experience under my belt, and really can't think of anyone more qualified than me. So here we go. Bismillah. Apparently, my boss didn't think so. He presented to me my new team lead, Nat, who was the most annoying coworker I'd ever had in my life. It's one thing to have someone not appreciate you, but to have them disregard all of your hard work and effort is another. Nat belittled everything I did. And it got to a point where he started to treat me more like a secretary. And apparently, I even stunk at that. And in his opinion, the coffee was cold. I thought you said it was cold. I actually heated it up anyway and let it go. As if that wasn't enough, Nat decided that being my lead meant he could treat himself to anything that was mine whenever he felt like it. So I blew up on him and let him know not to touch my stuff and thought I'd give him a taste of his own medicine by disrespecting his belongings. But I remembered the Prophet, peace be upon him, giving his food and clothes to people that rudely demanded it from him. So once again, I let it go. I gave Nat the benefit of a doubt and assumed that he didn't realize how obnoxious he really was. Until he made it very clear to me he really didn't care much for me or my feelings. So I decided I'd show him I didn't care either, and that I'd just chill and work as I pleased. But then I let it go, remembering how the Prophet, peace be upon him, dealt with those who tried to provoke him. You know, it's easier to be lenient and forgiving when the person getting on your nerves is the one in authority. You pretty much have no choice. And the incentive is not the reward of the hereafter, but simply not losing any worldly benefit. But then it happens. Nat screwed up by giving me a termination notice for the wrong employee. I thought I'd let the big guy handle this one and wanted it to get as ugly as possible for Nat. So I let our boss call in the employee whose name was mistakenly put on the notice by Nat. So Eric walks in having no idea why he was called, probably thinking he was getting a bonus. Instead, the boss tells him he's getting laid off because he's been late to work 12 times in the last month alone and wasn't meeting any of his deadlines. Eric insisted that none of that was true, and that's when I came into the picture. Like the natural investigator I was, I proceeded to point out to my boss how Nat incompetently put the wrong Eric on the termination notice and put us all in this super awkward situation. And that, my friend, was the beginning of the end of Nat. Or it could have been. But I remembered how the Prophet, peace be upon him, acted when his enemies were at his mercy. And if the Prophet, peace be upon him, could forgive the people that tried to kill him, surely I could forgive Nat. And funny enough, me and Nat actually got close that day, and have been working well together ever since. 
It's amazing how an act of kindness can really win someone's heart over. And that, to me, was a greater victory. One of the beautiful descriptions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is that the more you increased in foolishness towards him or in anger towards him, the more gentle and kind he became. In essence, the more bad character you showed him, the more good character he would respond to you with. And that's really a sign of great strength. As Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah, he said that be like the incense, where the more that you're burnt, the more fragrance you actually release. And that's really where you see strength. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said that strength is not in being able to overcome others, but rather it's being able to control yourself when you're angry. In essence, it's a lot harder to control yourself or to overcome yourself than it is to overcome others. Because at that moment, shaitan attacks you and he tries to get in the driver's seat and push you to the passenger seat where you just watch the rest of the way as you say things that you're not accustomed to saying and do things that you're not accustomed to doing. But if you're able to stay in the driver's seat and not let anyone under your skin, not let anyone in your head, not let anyone in your heart, not let anyone ruin your life, not even let them ruin your day, then you are showing great strength and you're practicing one of the most beloved qualities to Allah, which is forbearance. And Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said something very powerful and profound. He said that when your enemy shoots arrows at you and he misses you, not only have you escaped his harm, but you've also caused him to waste his arrows. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you guys for watching this episode. We thank you all for your support. And we hope that you enjoyed watching it. Share it inshallah ta'ala, let people know. Make sure you like this video and you share it with your friends. If you haven't watched the previous episodes, make sure you click here. And if you'd like to watch the entire series, then click here for the playlist. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.